He is the YouTube sensation, the one and only Jimmy Dore. Jimmy, welcome uh, to the mother of all talk shows. Wonderful to see two hatted men uh, on the screen. Uh, you and I are about the last men standing. They seem to be shooting everyone else uh, down. What do you account for our success? Well, first of all, I just got to tell you, it is exhausting uh, doing this better than you. Uh, it really takes it out of me. And uh, I'm going to go back to not doing it as good as you. So then you can be the best one. So because uh, you know how hard that is. So anyway, um, um, th they've, they can take me out whenever they feel like it, I guess, uh, because I've had uh, uh, threats. For YouTube has already had meetings with me and stuff like that. And, and so they've just announced, YouTube just announced uh, the other day, uh, that if, if you trivialize the war that, that, that they can use that to take your channel down. So the point is they can take you down whenever they feel like it. We know that now. And so if you were wondering how they would have censored people, uh, during the WMD's Iraq war period, this is how they would do it. They would say, you can't trivialize something. And so they're saying, you. I mean, so I'm a comedian that by trade, that's what I've done for the last uh, 25 years. And, uh, so I tri trivialize everything with jokes. That's what they could say. So they, so at any point they can take you down from, so why they haven't, I don't know, but the good thing is, is I don't need someone to give me a job. So I'm not looking for a job. Right. And I didn't come up through the news business or, or the corporate world. I came in through the nightclubs, uh, doing stand up comedy. And, uh, so I'm not looking to make friends in this space in, of journalism or news reporting. And so it frees me up to uh, be better than them in a lot of ways that I mean, I'm barely even trying. Well, uh, if that's what you achieve through barely even trying, uh, it's their problem if you really get into your stride because you have specialized in uh, lampooning uh, the pompous and the hypocrites, uh, the, the, the warmongers, the merchants, of war, the masters of war, to use Bob Dylan's phrase. Uh, but they're ruling the world, at least for the minute. I personally think their days are numbered. That much doesn't surprise me, Jimmy. But what surprises me is how the liberals have gone full turtle. Uh, they are now uh, amongst the most belligerent voices to be found anywhere. And they, of course, control big tech. They're all liberals in big tech, and they've turned out to be tyrants more than any right-wing tyrant we ever knew in the past. So, I mean, the way you keep control is you control the narrative. And how do you control the narrative? You do censorship. And how do you sell censorship? You say it's for the people's own protection. It's the oldest trick in the book. Every tyrant does, does the same thing. And so, you know, who, who are you not allowed to criticize is the people who are you uh, uh, rule you. I don't know, some smart person said that. Uh, and so who aren't you allowed to? And so now they get to decide uh, what's true, what's not. And look at all the things just around the coronavirus uh, that turned out to be false. Uh, that you weren't allowed to question. You weren't allowed to question the if the virus came from a lab. You weren't allowed to question if the uh, masks worked or didn't work. You weren't allowed to do all these things. And uh, that turned out you weren't allowed to. So Fauci lies about herd immunity. They lied about ivermectin. They made it seem like it was a horse poison. It turns out to be one of, you know, a Nobel Prize winning medicine. And once you find that out and then you start looking, you find out they're lying about everything. And so, again, we're not a democracy in the United States. So the idea that we are, we're a we're an oligarchy run by capitalists. And so if you see the United States in a war somewhere else, it's almost guaranteed we're there uh, for capitalism. And exactly what's happening in Ukraine right now is about energy and hegemony and imperialism. And, and, and so you only get one side of the story told in American uh, press, and now they're going to make it okay to censor us. By the way, they just Facebook just said it was okay to praise Nazis. They did. They also said, and in fact, the man that signed the memo uh, is in literally a liberal Democrat. He was the leader of the liberal Democrats in Britain. He was the deputy prime minister for a brief and inglorious uh, period. 
he actually signed the memo that gave the permission to call for the death of people, Russians, uh, for this limited uh, period. Uh, not a right that's been given to anybody in any other conflict, either one that's still running or has run in the past. This is my point about the liberals. See, in the past, the big moguls that owned the TV stations and the newspapers, the liberals were on our side saying, hey, don't censor us. This is an abuse of your power. But now the liberals are doing it. Well, it's great. Yeah, I agree. It's nuts. Uh, you thought authoritarianism be always equated with the right. But there is no left. See, I've, I've lived in America, but there really is no left in America, especially in, in government. It's two right wing parties and they both are beholden to the military industrial complex, big pharma and big tech. And so they've just farmed out censorship to private corporations. And so now if you say, hey, you're censoring me, they go, no, it's only censorship if the government does it. But I adhere to the principle uh, that came out of the Enlightenment period. You're against censorship no matter where it comes from, whether it comes from the state or it comes from the religion or from a corporation. And so they've just farmed out censorship. And censorship... Um, it, it, has there ever been a problem that censorship ever fixed? <laughs> well, no. Uh, and of course, self-censorship, what Francis Bacon called the arrow that flies in the night, uh, nobody ever sees it, but people uh, bite their tongues or stub their finger just short of the keyboard. They don't write or ask questions uh, for fear of uh, the consequences for them. So self-censorship, big tech censorship, and state censorship, because no one can doubt that the state is driving the tech companies to do this. And as I've said, uh, Nick Clegg, Sir Nick Clegg, if you don't mind, is himself a creature of government in Britain and the Facebook executive. So the point you've made too, you alluded to Iraq and then you stated uh, certain contentious uh, positions that you had taken. Uh, over the coronavirus, none of which are contentious anymore. So if I had said in 2003 on Facebook, there are no weapons of mass destruction and this entire thing is a hoax, I would have been taken down and stopped from saying it. The questions that you raised about uh, the efficacy of, of things like masks and so on, are now commonplace, it's, it's perfectly obvious. You've got politicians in one picture, let me give you an example, Trudeau was meeting the British Prime Minister in a mask, and in another picture he was meeting the 96-year-old Queen of England who just had COVID without a mask, and he was hovering like he was about to plant uh, a kiss uh, on the end of her nose. That's how close he was to it. This whole absurdity is now a joke. And if you can't lampoon it, uh, then to what extent are we a free country? So we're not a free... Well, I don't know about your country, but I know my country, we only have as much freedom as the corporation will allow you. I mean, we only have six huge corporations that control all of our media. And they're all funded by the people they're supposed to be investigating and exposing. And that's why a guy, a schmuck like me, a nightclub comedian, can come into their space and do a better job. Right now, if you're getting the news in the United States from the corporate news, which is where everybody gets it, almost, almost, um, then you're being misinformed. You don't know any, you don't know anything about what's happening in Ukraine, really. You think that uh, uh, Vladimir Putin just decided to flip out for no reason and start bombing people. You don't know that we helped institute a a, uh, a coup, a pro-West coup in uh, Ukraine, and uh, eight years ago we brought in. Uh, and then there's a bunch of people in that country who didn't want to live under a coup and they didn't want to go along with that. And so what did the Ukraines do? They got Nazis to start bombing the Donbass and they wouldn't stop for eight years, even though there's an agreement that said they would. And so this, this is, no one's justifying war. I'm anti-war no matter where it comes from. And I condemn Putin for invading, but 
Uh, this was predicted that was going to happen for 20 years because of NATO encroachment. This wasn't predicted by me. It was predicted by former uh, ambassadors to the UN or former people who worked for the State Department. It was predicted by all the scholars who looked into this. So this was, pre I mean, this isn't, but it's being reported in the United States as if this is all new and it came out of nowhere and that we're at the threat of nuclear war because Putin didn't take his uh, uh, his antidepressant medicine or something. And that's, he, you know, of course, every, every time the United States, by the way, right now the United States is occupying one third of Syria and no one even mentions that. Uh, and and our bombs are raining down on Yemen, the poorest country in the Middle East. Right. We're, so we're not going to get our oil from Russia. We're going to get it from Saudi Arabia so we can have we could feel good about ourselves and sleep at night. Saudi Arabia is committing a genocide right now in Yemen and with our help. And chop the heads of 81 people in one day yesterday. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Well, it's always a party. 81 beheadings in a single day. Even ISIS never reached these kind of levels. So we're begging. Uh, you know, Biden said that, uh, that uh, he, he regarded uh, MBS, the crown prince, as a pariah, uh, and he was going to reset America's relations with Saudi Arabia. Now, now he's begging him to take a phone call uh, to up the output of, uh, of the oil industry. Just in the time left available, Jimmy, I wanted to touch on something you again alluded to there. And that's the rewriting of history. Maddo, mad for short, uh, on whatever station she's on, Rachel Mad, uh, on the television yesterday, and a guy called McFall, former US ambassador to yes. Moscow. They, they, he said, and then they tweeted, without attributing it to him, so coming from them, that Hitler never used chemical weapons when in fact he industrially annihilated millions of Jews and millions of others in literal gas chambers. How's that for rewriting history? So they, they've stooped, so to manufacture consent for this war in Ukraine, that's rising, raising everybody's uh, gas prices and pre pre they're pretending that we're paying higher gas prices for freedom and liberty. So to stoop to get to manufacture consent in the United States for that, they've stooped now at MSNBC and Rachel Maddow on her show to praising Hitler. That's what I, they're doing. You they're praising uh, Hitler. You, 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 you what they're, I, used to, I used to do a joke about, uh, about that, about, uh, you know, no matter anybody who tells me I'm funny, I have a soft spot for him. Even if Hitler said, hey, Jimmy, I saw your show last night. It was very funny. I would be like, you know, there's another side to that guy that people really never saw. Well, and that's what, what they doing. did. Yeah, that's what they, they did a literal they joke. Did they did it. <laughs> and they weren't joking. Uh, speaking of jokes, how, how do you avoid lampooning a guy wandering around in his pajamas in the White House, not safe, <laughs> not safe with the button on his dressing gown? Never mind the nuclear button. How do you not lampoon that? You know, uh, like, I, I, like to, if they can make you, this is the power of propaganda. If they can make you think of Nobel Prize winning human medicine as horse poison, they can make you think the president of the United States is not demented. I mean, the guy gets stuck in a couch three times a day. I mean, come on, how do you write? How do you not? I mean, he can't speak. Everybody knows it. It's like we're all in like this mass hypnosis. We're all pretending the president of the United States is uh, is of sound mind and body. And he's not. He's been AWOL for a long time. Yeah, uh, ask the Pope about the, uh, the famous uh, uh, toilet incident in the Vatican. Jimmy Dore, you're a superstar. And I'm really grateful to you for making time to join with us tonight on the mother of all talk shows. Well, I'm telling you, it's back on you. Now you're the best there is out there because I'm pulling back and you, you enjoy it. <laughs> Keep on trucking, man. Thanks very much indeed. Okay.